All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump on in. So uh, it's been a long break, but we're hopping right back to it. We left off on going over how the configuration um, is set up for IPsec VPNs. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about how to set up the firewall policies. We're also going to go ahead and try to touch on um, redundant VPNs and monitoring and logs. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. Right, so routes for route-based IPsec VPNs, right? What does that mean, so, right? So the FortiGate supports uh, two types of IPsec VPNs, route-based and policy-based. So what does that mean? Policy-based is a legacy IPsec VPN so that is supported only for uh, backwards compatibility reasons, right? And it is used yet, yeah, right? It's it's not recommended for new deployments, but again, it's if you're transitioning from, let's say a sonic wall, right? And you export your um, access control list, right? And you trying to import it to uh, the FortiGates, or if you're just running a FortiGate that's on old code and, you know, and you're doing policy base, um, policy base would, you know, play in that favor, right? Uh, but essentially route base is where you want to go, right? And in a route based IPsec VPN, right? The FortiGate automatically adds a virtual interface with the VPN name, okay? So as soon as you configure the IPsec VPN, the FortiGate is going to automatically create a virtual interface, right? Right. This means that not only can you configure routing and firewall policies for IPsec traffic, right, in the same way you do for non-IPsec traffic, you can also leverage the presence of multiple connections to the same destination to achieve redundancy. Let's say that again, right? So with in a route-based IPsec VPNs, right? Not only can you configure routing and firewall policies for IPsec traffic in the same way you do non-IPsec traffic, you can also leverage the presence of multiple connections to the same destinations to achieve redundancy, okay? Another benefit of route-based IPsec VPNs is that you can deploy uh, variations of IPsec VPNs such as uh, L2TP over IPsec, right? And uh, GRE over IPsec, right? Tunneling, okay? In addition, you can also enable dynamic routing pro protocols for scalability purposes and best path selections. BGP, OSPF, but of course, typically BGP on the global internet, okay? Any questions? No. Okay, all right. So routes for IPsec VPN. So uh, just keep your eyes on the uh, diagram that you see to the right, right? Although you can use, right, those uh, protocols that I just, those routing protocols that I just met, mentioned, right? BGP, OSPF, or what have you, for IPsec VPNs, right? Just for the exam, right? And for this lesson, we're just gonna focus on creating a static route, okay? So, Here's how we configure, right? Uh, the routing configuration needed for IPsec VPN depends on the remote gateway configure. Okay, what does that what does that mean, right? So we have phase one and phase two that we talked about at the fundamental level, right? Phase one it needs that remote gateway, right? Because that's going to be used to uh, connect or make a uh, or dial up, right, to that peer, right? And so whenever you set that, whenever you set that remote gateway, right, it's gonna go ahead, right? And you, it's gonna go ahead and add one, the virtual interface that we just spoke about, but it's also gonna go ahead and add a user called dial-up, right? Of course, you know, you can go ahead and um, enable add route, right? And I'll get into that later, but this is what's going to happen, especially if you're going through a wizard, right? You're going through the IPsec VPN wizard. It's automatically going to configure all of this. But if you're doing it manually, this is what you're going to see. If you're configuring phase one and phase two manually, you're going to see, hey, I set up a uh, IPsec phase one and phase two. Uh, the dial-up user dial-up is now going to be automatically configured, right? And what's going to happen, right? The FortiGate is automatically adds a static route for the local network presented by the remote peer during phase two negotiations, okay? Right? And so what happens is that route is added to the routing table 
only after phase two is up, right? And here's where the details come in, and, and this is where you have to remember. Only when phase two is up, meaning that the tunnel is up, the full tunnel is up, phase one and phase two, then that route will be, that local route for the remote peer will be added to the local, um, added to the local routing table. If phase two goes down, right, for the IPsec tunnel, that route to the local network on the remote peer behind that other forty gate is going to be removed from my, right, or the local routing table, okay? So that route is conditional, okay? As long as the IPsec VPN is up, that route is going to be in the local uh, routing table. If it's not, it's going to go ahead and be removed, okay? Right? Let's talk about that add route, right? If it's uh, enabled or disabled, right? So, like I stated, right? Uh, whenever you set the remote gateway, right? Whenever you're setting up uh, phase one, right? And you disable add route, right? FortiGate does not add a static route automatically, right? In this case, a dynamic routing protocol is used between the remote peers to exchange routing information, BGP, okay? Um, OSPF, what have you, with that, whatever dynamic uh, routing protocol works, right? Um, right, but when the remote gateway is set to you know static, right, a static IP address or dynamic DNS, you must configure static routes, plain and simple. Okay, and when you configure that static route, you have to make sure, and I'm sure you guys can see. You have to select that virtual interface for the IP set tunnel has the outgoing interface. Okay. So it knows where to go through. Okay. Oops. All right. So firewall policies for IP set VPNs, right? Um, we're looking at, if you look at the diagram here, we're looking at two, um, we're looking at, you know, two policies, right? Same FortiGate, right? What's going to happen is, especially if it's going bidirectionally, right? You need to have two policies, right, for both directions, right? One going northbound, one going southbound. Okay. All right. Why is that? That's not just for the traffic that's going to be passing through the tunnel. You need that actually for the tunnel to come up, right? So if this bidirectional um, firewall policy is not configured, your tunnel will stay down, okay? All right? So when you configure firewall policies for non-IPsec traffic, the policy determines the direction of the traffic that initiates sessions. Let me say that again. When you configure firewall policies for non-IPsec traffic, the policy determines the direction of the traffic that initiates sessions. Northbound, a regular northbound policy, inside out, Right, so your local local area network, right? PC that's on it, it's trying to reach out to Google, right? Since I have a northbound policy inside out, right? That's what it accepts. My PC that's on the inside is always going to start initiate sessions. Follow me? Okay, so the same applies for IPsec traffic, right? And for that exact reason, right? You usually want to configure at least two firewall policies for the um, for the IPsec VPN that you're configuring, right? Exactly what I said, right? One incoming and one outgoing. That is that is bare bones. Always what you have to, have to configure whenever you're configuring IPsec VPN. The incoming, right? The incoming policy allows traffic initiated from the remote site, right? So maybe somebody that's maybe at a branch that needs to communicate with the data center, right? They need to be able to initiate sessions, right? And vice versa. Maybe we work behind the data center and we need to initiate sessions. We need that firewall policy there. So that's the reason why. That's another reason why we need that uh, firewall policies for the IPsec tunnel, right, in both directions, right? Okay. All right. Again, each of the policies, right, whenever we look at it, that virtual interface that was created that we talked about is always going to be created using the phase one name. Okay. All right. And with that being said, that's it.
for routing and firewall policies, right? Let's go ahead and go through a little knowledge check, right? So question one, which IPsec VPN type is legacy and not recommended for new deployments? Is it A, route-based VPN, or is it B, policy-based VPN? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, I got you. So which IPsec VPN type is legacy? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you can go. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Which IPsec VPN type is legacy and not recommended for new deployments? Is it A, route-based VPNs, or is it B, policy-based VPNs? B. B? Okay. Makiva, you agree? Uh, yes. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Question two. What is the configuration requirement for an IPsec tunnel to come up? Is it A, a firewall policy accepting traffic on the IPsec tunnel, or B, a route for IPsec traffic? This is a tough one. B, a route. Don't you need a policy, though, for IPsec? But the policy permits the traffic. May I read a question again? Sure. Sorry. What is a configuration requirement for an IPsec tunnel to come up? Is you need it A? You need the policies, right? I'm gonna say B because I I, I think I've seen something on phase if phase two won't come up if there's not a route. So I'm gonna say route. And you need phase two to come up for the tunnel to come up. You need one firewall policy for the tunnel to come up, friend. What you talking about? A route. Oh. That's I'm like, what? Oh. So the answer the answer is A. Oh wow. Right? Because what is routing doing? Routing is just pushing that traffic. But you need that firewall policy because, again, this is still a FortiGate firewall. You still need that policy to allow traffic between both sides. You can have a route all day. It's not going to pass that traffic. Okay. So if you don't have a policy in place, the, the, the tunnel just won't come up either? Yep. Much. Yep. Okay. And that's, if you see, if you look at the, the PowerPoint, you can see at least one firewall policy is needed for a tunnel to come up. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Okay. All right. Let's move on. So now we're going to go ahead and, and touch on redundant VPNs. Okay. All right. So redundant VPNs, right? It's exactly what it sounds like, right? How can we make, if my Kevia deploys and, you know, she does an IPsec, VPN uh, deployment project, right? How does she make it more resilient so that when she's speaking to stakeholders or the board and saying, hey, you know, I know we're low on cash, but this is a, a this is a important investment, right? Uh, and let me show you why, right? Right? how can she configure it to make sure it's a, she has a good case, right? Once the first thing first is she needs to have a secondary uh, ISP connection, right? She needs to have that. That's the first things first, right? Um, to configure the IPsec VPNs, right? If the primary fails, right? What she's gonna show the stakeholders is a primary fails, another tunnel is gonna be used and it's gonna automatically flip over, right? Right? But there's two types of redundant um, VPNs. You got partially redundant, you got fully redundant, right? Partially redundant, you see, you, if you see the diagram, right? Partially redundant on one pair, right? Usually the hub or HQ, right? A backup ISP is available if the main ISP is down. Each VPN terminates on different physical ports, only on one side, okay? Partially redundant, right? That way the FortiGate can use an alternative VPN. On the other pair, each VPN terminates on the same physical port. So the spoke is not fault tolerant, right? So let's say you have headquarters in a branch, right? That branch is not redundant, but HQ is. That's partially redundant, okay? Fully redundant is the exact opposite, right? That hub and spoke sp setup, they both have uh, primary and secondary connections, right? AKA a fully redundant VPN. Make sense? Okay. All right. So how do you configure it, right? Um, how do you configure both a partially or uh, fully redundant VPN, right? 
first, we're, we're automatically going to go ahead and create a phase one for each path, right? One phase one for the primary VPN and one for the uh, backup VPN, okay? Um, definitely should enable uh, DPD, right, on both ends, okay? Um, second, create at least one phase two definition for each phase one. Okay, third, you must add at least one static route for each VPN. Routes for the primary VPN must have a lower distance or administrative distance um, or priority, right, than the backup, right? This calls the FortiGate to use the primary VPN while it's available. If the primary VPN fails, then the FortiGate automatically uses the backup route. Alternatively, you can use a dynamic routing protocol such as OSPF and BGP. Finally, configure the firewall policies to allow traffic through both the primary and backup VPNs, and you have your redundant VPNs, right? So where is where does it become a redundant VPN, right? At layer three, right, within routing, right? That's how you would configure which one is primary and which one is your backup, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. With that being said, you are you have completed the redundant VPN section. Let's uh, do a quick knowledge check. Okay, question one: Which feature should be enabled in a redundant uh, IPsec VPN deployment? Is it A DPD or is it B X off? Is it A? Is it A? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That is correct. Now, um, I, I see you guys didn't ask. Let me let me ask you guys. Do you guys know what DPD is? Isn't that something like the the, the when the tunnel goes down to? Yes. Yes. So dead. So dead peer detection. Yeah. Right. So we want that, right? Because that's it's going to continuously communicate with the peer, right? And if I don't get you know, at a, and I'm explaining this at a high level, okay? If me being one of the peers, right, um, in the IPsec tunnel, and if I'm reaching out to my peer using DPD continuously, if I don't get no responses during a specific interval, oh, this IPsec VPN is down, I need to switch over. Or I need to report that it's down and, and uh, log within our event logs. That makes sense? Yep. So that, so, you know, redundant, you know, re within redundant VPNs, DPD, that's why they said it is mandatory to have that configured. Okay. All right. Question two. Which settings determine whether a tunnel is used as primary or backup? Is it A, routing, or is it B, firewall policies? It's still routing. Routing. There we go. Nice. Okay. Last but not least, let's go ahead and go through the last section, um, which is monitoring and logs. Okay. All right, so my favorite place, the CLI, right? How can we take a look at, you know, what's the phase one status? In the newer um, the newer code, like, right? So 7.4, right? I think that's the gold standard right now. 7.4.4 has a earlier today because there's been uh, new P-certs, P-cert advisories that dropped. Um, they, you can't, typically hover over, right, the IPsec tunnel and tells you phase one and phase two is up, you now actually either need to find another way or you just go to the CLI, which is my favorite, right? Um, and typically, right, um, even as old as the six train, right, but you only, it's typically only available to see phase one through the CLI only, right? In the past, it was the GUI as well, but it's typically, uh, you can rely on mostly on the CLI, right? Um, Right. So if you want to get that phase one information right in detail, right, you'll be able to see oh, the I, uh, security association. You'll be able to see the IP set security association. I remember we learned, right, Ike security association is phase one, right? IP set security association is phase two. OK, so we're going to get all of that. All right. Um, it's going to tell us the direction. It's going to tell us uh, the status, uh, you know what uh, algorithm we're using for encryption and hashing, 
right? Uh, confidentiality and integrity, right? Um, it's going to show us a hash version of the key, right? The DPD sent and received, right? And the lifetime and to rekey, right? So we're going to have all that information, which is good for uh, troubleshooting. And also, I actually skipped skip uh, some of the phase one information. It's also gonna have the interface, right? That we're using for phase one. It's gonna have the uh, address, right? The address that we're using the source and of course the destination, right? And of course, when it was created, okay? And that phase one name right here. And of course the VDOM that it's a part of, okay? All right, so take a screenshot, know what it looks like and understand if you ever needed to check phase one to see if it's up and running and try to troubleshoot phase two, you can check this first and make sure that phase one is up. It's the get VPN Ike gateway, and of course the name that you gave it, right, for phase one. Now, I got a question. Yes, sir. So where it says status, that's just basically saying phase two is up, right? No, it's, no, it's actually telling you phase one is up as well, right? So remember, we talked about security, security associations, right? Mm-hmm. So Ike Security Associations, right? What does that do? That's phase one, right? That's, remember our example was, hey, this is a secure line. Yeah. Okay, so that's telling us, boom, phase one is up. I, IPsec Security Association, oh, it's telling us phase two is, is up as well, right? Because you can see created, established, time, right? It's telling you that it's up. Oh, I was not even looking there for okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I see it. I okay. See it. And then if you go if you go down to the second section, right? Status established, right? Okay. Or you'll see one has another option, I believe it'll say down, right? If it was down, right? That'll tell you that of course the IP set someone was down when you go ahead and troubleshoot. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good question, man. All right. So like I said, this most recent code and a little bit of older code, right? On the GUI, we typically can only see phase two. Sometimes, you know, certain codes we can see phase one as well, but I'm telling you per experience and for the exam, uh, we typically can't see the phases and if they're, you know, if they're up or not. But you can make changes to the uh, filters or what have you and actually enable that, okay? Um, Right, and you can make that change to the IPsec uh, widget that you have, okay? Um, and you can see, you know, phase one status, okay? You can also bring up and down individual tunnels, right? Get additional details. Um, and of course, when you bring the tunnel up and down, right? Um, you are only affecting, and this is important for the exam and for you guys to know for your career. If you ever take down, you say bring down the tunnel, Right, right clicking, of course, the tunnel, and you say bring down. You are only affecting phase two, you are not affecting phase one. Okay, so when you like, so when you bounce the tunnel from here, you only it's only bouncing phase two. Generally, it's only phase two. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. So, how do you bounce the entire tunnel? Definitely. So it gives you it gives you that option to do the entire tunnel, but generally, if you say bring down, it's typically only phase two. That. Okay, yeah, it does give you that option to say to bring oh, the entire tunnel down. Yeah, it's some verbiage, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, and of course, if the tunnel is up, meaning phase two is up. Of course, we're going to see the green arrows displayed right next to its uh its name that we configured for the tunnel, right? Of course, if it's down, we're going to see a red arrow down. Okay. All right. Of course, the IPsec widget within the dashboard is also going to show us the amount of data that traversed ingress and egress the tunnel. Okay. And of course, when we click on the columns, right, it's going to give us a menu showing us different columns that's available. It's going to, you know, if we wanted to see the phase two protocols, um, proxy destination ports, proxy ID destination, status, timeout. X auth user, right? A whole bunch of things, right? Uh, comments created, we can enable all of, of these things within the widget, okay? All right. 
right? But here's the nitty gritty, right? Um, if we go ahead and set, right? If we go ahead and set the remote gateway, we wanted to, uh, we configured all the tunnel tunnels up. How do we monitor these IPsec routes, right? Right. Well, if we, you know, configured and we set a remote gateway to static and dynamic DNS, right? The static routes for these tunnel become active in the routing table after phase one comes up. Okay. All right. So the static routes that we configured for, right, that we configured for our IPsec tunnel, right, they'll become active in the routing table until phase one of the tunnel comes up. Okay. So you can we can configure routes all day. If that firewall policy isn't in place that enables traffic between uh you know local and peer, and that phase one doesn't come up. That route, that static route that we configured is not going to um, be added to the uh, routing table. Okay. As soon as we configure the firewall policy, phase one negotiation is started automatically, right? Okay. And that's just because within the Forti game, okay, um, phase one negotiation negotiations is is automatic negotiation by default. So whenever you configure IPsec VPN, it's automatically going to try to reach out to the peer and start negotiation, negotiating uh, phase one. Okay? Right? Why? Right? Um, this behavior allows the FortiGate to match interesting traffic to the right tunnel. Right? Right? So if phase two is not up, traffic matching the static route triggers a phase two negotiation which eventually results in the tunnel or phase two to come up. So we first need to bring up phase one, right? And when we start seeing that traffic that's dedicated for the remote peer, we need to say, oh, before we can bring up phase two, let's make sure the phase two tunnel is up, right? After phase one, right? Remember what we talked about? Is this a secure line? Is it a secure tunnel? Great, now we can go ahead and pass traffic. Okay, that's what it's doing. Does it make sense? But everything is relying on each other, right? The routing table is relying on the firewall policies and vice versa. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. And of course, last but not least, when you set up the remote gateway to dial up user, by default, a static route for the destination network is added after phase two comes up. The distance set for the static route is 15. If phase two goes down, the route is removed from the routing table. Okay, let's take a look at some logs, all right? All right, I know it's kind of little, but there's a section within log and reports. We go to events and we go to VPN events. It's not just gonna show us IPsec VPN. Uh, events is gonna show us SSL VPN events, right? For those that connect via for the client. Okay, but we're worried about IPsec VPN log events, you know, for now, right? By default, right, the FortiGate logs IPsec uh, VPN events, right? Okay, we know how to get to it, right? Log and report, then events, then VPN events, okay? Right, typically, this log tracks the progress of phase one and phase two negotiations, right? and report on tunnel up and down events, right? And DPD failures, very important for troubleshooting, right? Especially in redundant VPN setups, right? Um, it also reports other things, right? But everything related to IPsec, phase one and phase two, you are going to see in these logs. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right, with that being said, you guys are you guys have completed the IPsec VPN section. Just got two questions for you, right? So question one, the IPsec monitor widget on the GUI shows the status for which phase? Phase one, right, A, or phase two, B? Phase two. All right, good stuff. All right, question two. When the remote gateway is set to dial up user, a static route to the remote network is added to the routing table after A, 
phase one comes up or B, phase two comes up? Phase two. Phase, phase two. two. Okay. All right. With that being said, you guys are finished with the IPsec VPN section. Any questions? No. Okay. All right. Well, um, take note of what to review. As you guys see up here, take a screenshot, do what you got to do. But this is, and the study guide wouldn't tell you this for no reason. So please make sure you review this. Um, you re yeah, make sure you review this as much as possible for your exam prep, okay? All righty, will do. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a great day, and I'll see you soon.